Hey, how's it going? Seth here. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about wetlands. So what exactly are wetlands and why are they kind of a problem for land investors and developers? And what can you do to determine whether or not there are wetlands on a property that you are looking at? So let's start from the very beginning. If we go to the EPA website, they actually have a pretty clear definition for us. So wetlands are important features in the landscape that provide numerous beneficial services for people, fish, and wildlife. So this includes protecting and improving water quality, providing fish and wildlife habitats, storing floodwaters, and maintaining surface water flow during dry periods. So wetland areas are very important to the natural ecosystem around them. And that's part of why they're a bit of a problem for anybody who's trying to build on a piece of land where there are wetlands, because you can't touch the wetlands. You can't just fill them in or bulldoze the things. We need those. Wetlands are federally protected areas. And if you do destroy these areas without authorization, you could be prosecuted for that. So this is very important and not something you just want to ignore. If you're going to buy a property with the intent of building on it or developing it, you definitely want to know if wetlands are anywhere on that property so you don't disturb those areas. And it's not to say it's impossible to move them or fill them in, but if you do that, you basically have to buy wetland credits or develop more wetlands in some other area nearby to offset the impact impact of getting rid of that wetland. So it's very, very expensive to do this. And it could be worth all that trouble and extra cost, depending on the value of the project that's being developed. But most of the time, it's a lot easier to just not touch the wetlands. And as a land investor, it's a lot easier to just buy some other property that doesn't have wetlands, or at least buy a property where there's not so much wetlands on it that it you know makes the whole thing useless or a lot less useful. So typically what we're talking about are marshes, bogs, swamps, fins. And in most cases, you can see these things and just instantly know that's a wetland area because it's literally wet land. So it's kind of obvious. But the problem is sometimes it's not obvious, especially depending on what kind of wetland area this is or where it is. There could be certain times of the year when the wetland area is completely dry. So it's not always a foolproof thing to know where wetland areas are, but it's no less important to make sure that you're not developing in those areas. And as a land investor, that you can identify when you're dealing with a property with some of these areas in them so you can either not buy it or at least go into the situation with your eyes wide open knowing what you're getting into. You don't want to buy a property and find out after the fact that it's full of wetlands and you can't do anything with it. So how do we do this? Well, there is the fast, easy, and less precise way, and this is the way that most land investors start the process, or there is the slower, more time-consuming, and costly way that will give you 100% certainty about where these wetlands are. So let's start with the fast, cheap, and easy way that you can do this from your computer, because I think in many, many cases, this is pretty much where everybody will start, and you can decide from here whether you want to go further and actually spend money to get 100% certainty. Probably the fastest, most user-friendly way that I know to do this is with this software called The Land Portal. By the way, we do have an affiliate link to The Land Portal if you want to check it out. It's retipster.com forward slash land portal. You can follow along with what I'm doing right here. All you have to do is go up here and find the property you're looking for. And you can do this either by typing out the address or if you have the APN number, you can do it that way. If you know the state, county, and APN number, or if you know the owner name, you could put the state, county, and the owner name. Or if you even have the coordinates, you could put that in there too. So in this case, I actually have an APN number. This property I'm going to is in South Carolina in Aiken County. Let's go ahead and check this out. So it's going to take us here and there is a lot you can do with a land portal. This is an excellent land due diligence tool because there's so many different things you can see right over here when you click on map filters and views. So we're going to click on this and we're going to see all these different layers we can add to or take away from this map we're looking at. Right here out of the gate, we can see the parcel map. That alone is pretty helpful. But another thing we can do here is click on this wetlands toggle switch, which turns on this layer, which shows us where the wetlands are. And as we can see here, it looks like there is some kind of a like seasonal stream or something flowing through here. And it looks like the wetland area surrounds that. And it definitely does encroach onto our property over here at this end and a little bit over here. And, you know, this is not necessarily a deal killer. There's still plenty of room here where we could build and not touch the wetlands. But, you know, if we were getting one of these properties where like half the property is kind of rendered useless because of the wetlands, at least in terms of a development perspective, you could still go in here and like go hunting if you wanted to. But if you wanted to build something on this half of the property, that wetland area is going to be a problem. And by the way, you can also see like the 
floodplain level. So there we go. Floodplain, that's another thing that could definitely impact this. I think that's less of an issue than a wetlands, but still you probably wouldn't want to build your house in the middle of a flood zone either. You can also see water features, lots of different stuff you can see here in the land portal. And this isn't even getting to the main point of the land portal, which is to generate lists of property owners, but just as a due diligence tool, it's awesome. And it doesn't cost anything extra to use these little tools. Just as part of the monthly subscription, you can see all this stuff. So if you want to check that out, again, retipster.com forward slash land portal. Now, one thing to be aware of when you're looking at this kind of data in the land portal or any other data service that has a similar thing where it shows these different types of maps, you might be wondering, where are they getting this information? Is it coming from some government agency or some database somewhere? The answer is yes and yes. So where the wetlands mapper data is coming from is from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. This is a government agency for the U.S. and they have this whole map that plots out these supposed wetland areas all over the country. If you go here, and by the way, I'll include a link to this beneath this video if you want to check it out and click on this wetlands mapper thing, it'll bring up this map here and it works kind of the same way, but I will say it's a bit less user friendly and you can kind of zoom in on here and eyeball it and try to find the property wherever it was you were looking. And this is ultimately where all of this data is coming from. When you look at this on the land portal or land ID, any of these services that show wetland data, this is where it's coming from. This is like the home base. But the interesting thing to know about this wetland mapper data is that it's not always all that accurate. I've had times where it has told me that there's a wetland area in the middle of a parking lot. And other times when I knew there was a wetland area that it didn't indicate. So this is just a starting point. They're trying to like show you any low hanging fruit and red flags if they exist. It even says right here on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service website, this big old disclaimer where it says the maps are prepared from the analysis of high altitude imagery. Wetlands are identified based on vegetation, visible hydrology and geography. A margin of error is inherent in the use of imagery. Thus, detailed on the ground inspection of any particular site may result in revision of the wetland boundary or classification established. So right there, they're basically telling you like, this might not be right. Now I can't say if you actually do want to be able to rely on this information and know for sure whether or not there are wetlands on a property you're looking at, you ultimately have to hire a wetlands consultant to go out there on site walk the property and do what's called a wetland delineation where they use their own human eyes and look at it and they do some measurements and they look at what types of vegetation is there and they make an actual determination of whether or not that's a wetland area and you guessed it, this does cost money and it does take time. In terms of how you can find these people, you could just go to Google, type in wetlands consultants near me and I'm in Michigan. So it's gonna show me some results based on the state where I'm at. But if you were in Wisconsin or Maryland or some other place, you would probably find a similar thing there. You can see here in Michigan, there is a giant list of these people. It shows their names, their email addresses, phone number, and you can just call them up and tell them what you need. And little pro tip, sometimes what these people can do is they can do their own desk top version of this where they don't actually go out there in person to do it just yet. They kind of take the information, look it up from their computer and using their more educated eyes, look at the property and they can kind of give you their own gut feeling based on what they know, which is probably a lot more than what you know, and usually give you kind of like a 90% certainty answer on that. So it's still not 100%, but probably a lot better than what you could do on your own. So that could be another place to start, especially if you're looking at a property where the wetlands mapper is just completely wrong. They could probably tell you that. And in fact, they may have even worked on or near the property that you're looking at before because they do this stuff all the time and they kind of are familiar with their own little areas that they work in. Now, one other thing I want to show you, because this is kind of like a fallback in case the wetlands mapper is completely wrong. And this second method I'm going to show you is also not foolproof at all, but I'll just mention it because it's kind of related. So if you go back here to the land portal and open these filters back up, let's get rid of the floodplain. We'll get rid of the water features. So there's this other thing here called soil type. And this is also information you can get for free. I'll show you where you can get that in just a second. But what this is telling you is the different soil types on the property and in the area where you're looking. And the reason why this might be important is because one thing you'll pretty much always see in a wetland area is soil with a high hydric percentage. So what does this mean? 
Well, this is basically just soil that is waterlogged for a significant portion of the year because it's a soil type that holds and retains water like a sponge. Even if you don't see a lot of surface water, that soil still has a lot of water in it. And the information you'll see in these soil maps can give you some clues as to whether this is that type of soil. So what you can do with this map is you can go around, you'll see these little squiggly lines all over the place. This is the USDA's nationwide survey showing the different soil types throughout the country. And this is not pinpoint accurate, but it will at least give you a rough idea of what soil types are on and near your property. So if you go ahead and click on one of these things, it'll show you straight up what soil type it thinks is on your property. And you'll notice it's talking about farmland class and also this thing down here, NICCD code and NICCD code percentage. So the whole reason the USDA put together these soil maps was for agricultural farming purposes so that people could understand what types of soils were in different areas for the purpose of growing crops and understanding how productive that soil was likely to be. And it goes beyond that too, but that's kind of the essence of why this stuff exists. So that's why it's talking about farmland class and all this stuff. But there's some clues you can draw from this to understand wetland areas too, because again, these wetland areas typically have soil that doesn't drain very well, because remember this soil holds on to water for a long period of time. So if we click on this area right here, it tells us the wettest class of the soil. And it also says poorly drained. So right there, just doesn't drain that well. If we click on this type right here, it says somewhat poorly drained. And if you're ever unsure of what this stuff even means, John's loamy sand, you can always take this kind of thing and copy and paste it into ChatGPT and just ask it, what does this mean? Is this indicative of a wetland area or not? So when you see an NICCD code percentage of three or zero or something very, very low, what that's telling you is that this soil type is not going to support crops very well. And there can be different reasons for that. It could be because of the high hydric soil type, or it could be because of poor drainage. But guess what? Both of those things are what you see in wetland areas. So there you go. And similar to the wetlands mapper, the problem with this type of data is that it's not the most precise set of information. It's not like somebody surveyed every square inch of the country and took soil samples everywhere. And this data has a lot of limitations, but still for what it's worth and the fact that it's really easy to get, this can also give you a separate set of clues about whether or not it's a wetland area. And I should say this information from the USDA is a separate set of information from the wetlands mapper. So if you have two independent sources of information that are both indicating that, hey, there's a lot of clues here that this might be a wetland area. That's something you might want to pay attention to. And again, if you wanted to do the same type of search for the soil types on or near your property, you could do the same thing here. This is the USDA nationwide soil map. I'll include a link to this beneath this video if you want to check it out. And this is free to use, but I think you'll find similar to the wetlands mapper. It's just a lot less user friendly. It's harder to search and find properties. But ultimately, like this is the same data that the land portal is using. They just figured out how to package it a lot better and make it a lot easier to use. You can put the address in there, although if you're dealing with a vacant land property, you very well might not have an address. You could also just search by the state and county, then try to zoom in and find it that way. Again, it's not nearly as user friendly as the land portal is. That's why I recommend that because it's just like one home base where you can do all this stuff and it's way easier. It's not that expensive for what it is. So again, if you want it for free, I'll put a link to this beneath this video as well. But if you want the easy way, I'll have an affiliate link to the land portal too. And by the way, I'm just scratching the surface here with what the land portal can do. I've got a much longer video going into all the different features it has to offer. I'm just showing you the very basic essentials of how to look at wetlands and soil types here. Thanks again for watching. Talk to you next time.